Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Find Your Model Health, the official podcast of Shemaine's Model Health for those looking to optimize their long term health and weight. I am Shemaine Laney. I'm a biohacker and fitness and nutrition expert, and I'm really happy to have you back with me for another episode. I've been really eager to record this episode for a while, but been trying to trip chip away at my list of stuff to do. So I think this week is a great week to have this podcast because kids are back to school um, and it's going to be a nice addition to the podcast series I did on sleep a few weeks ago. So we're looking at is blue light affecting your sleep quality or making things worse pretty much. Um, Before we go on, I must emphasize that the information in these podcasts is for informational purposes only and should not be taken as medical advice. Please do consult with your healthcare practitioner before making any lifestyle changes. Okay, so what I mean by kids are back to school and this is a good time to look at this topic is because I'm not quite sure that many people are aware of the damaging effects that blue light has on their kids' health and their own health, especially later on in the evenings. Um, So I I really, really hope this episode opens some eyes um, and hopefully you benefit from it as well. So when we look at blue light, we're thinking of light emitting diodes or LEDs and fluorescent bulbs, uh, which are the most commonly used sources of illumination nowadays for us, apart from laptops and phones and stuff like that. Anyway, these bulbs are regarded as brighter and more energy efficient than other bulbs. LED bulbs are not only the common lighting in homes, offices and stores, they're also used in electronic displays like your phone and your laptop. While LEDs and fluorescent bulbs are convenient choice, they're not exactly a healthy one. So let's look at reasons why you might want to, I'm not going to say steer clear of these types of bulbs, but what you can do to biohack or hack this sort of lighting. So the problems with artificial light, all sources of artificial light, including LED and fluorescent bulbs, they can break off your circadian rhythm and regular sleep patterns. So the biological system of our body functions in pulses that are laid down by light received. This is known as your circadian rhythm, which manages and controls the timing of various biological functions like hormones, like our sleep sa- excuse me, sleep wake cycle, and even our hunger hormones. So eating hormones are highly connected to the light that our body picks up during the day. Up until modern times, our bodies were exposed to sunlight during the day and moonlight at night. When our ancestors saw sunlight, then it started to get dark, signals were sent out through the body. So the brains knew how to appropriately respond. So when we sense sunlight, our brain knew, hey, it's morning, let's pump out some cortisol to get you up and going. And then later on the day, as the sun started to set and it got dimmer, cortisol levels dropped. And even um, leptin, satiety hormones increased to kind of reduce hunger later in the day and our melatonin which is highly connected to hunger kicked in so melatonin has been shown to suppress hunger and when we look at our ancestors and natural lighting it kind of all makes sense and how they lived and stuff like that um Unfortunately for us though, evolution doesn't move as fast as technology and our brains are still wired to react to light in the same way as our ancestors did. This makes the artificially lit world we live in 
not very helpful to our biology um, because of course many of us sit under artificial lights all day and even all night and our bodies although they do the best that they can when we aren't receiving the correct light signals our bodies become baffled and they get knocked out of their natural rhythm um, and we see this as especially damaging at night and um, I'll just refer to the nurses studied there and studies done on night shift workers you can look into that more if you want that's that's another long conversation but the intensely bright blue light emitted from LEDs and fluorescent bulbs they trick your body into thinking it's daytime it's daytime all the time it's daytime like 24 hours a day let's constantly pump out the wrong hormones especially cortisol who doesn't get a chance to settle if your body always thinks it's first thing in the morning so when you're exposed to blue lights including the light emitted from your phone and your laptop and your tv your body stays more in wake mode so you don't produce sleep hormones or any of the other biological steps that your body needs to start preparing for sleep this is why it's very very important for you to have a good evening or bedtime routine that takes this blue lighting into consideration consideration so led and fluorescent bulbs they create a two-fold problem they generate artificial light and they produce blue light now blue light wavelengths created by electronic devices and light bulbs and i know some of this is going to be woo woo for some people out there and if you don't like what i'm putting down of course stop listening but i only put out what i feel people need to know and what they can um, take action on so blue light wavelengths created by electronic devices and light bulbs they increase alertness and they block melatonin production studies have revealed that blue wavelengths inhibit delta brain waves delta brain waves are so important i speak softly when i talk about delta brain waves because i understand how important they are to sleep i also understand how much i love sleep and how beneficial it is to my health so blue light inhibits delta brain waves these brain waves encourage sleep and enhance alpha wavelengths that generate attentiveness okay so when we look the, at the negative effects of blue light so far we've looked at it disrupts circadian rhythm um it decreases quality of sleep blocks melatonin can inhibit alertness in the body uh, there are there is correlation to an increased risk of depression too in blue light while we're while i'm on the topic so when we look at blocking blue light i mean i have my favorites that we can do but we'll we'll go through some of it so we know that Chronic fatigue, sleep deprivation, um, autoimmune disease, even depression, anxiety, obesity have been linked to blue light exposure, especially after sunset. And we know that these are growing epidemics, especially in developed countries where we have more exposure to blue light and the increasing omnipresence of blue light gadgets is just making things worse and worse. And dare I say, the more materialistic and technology advanced we're becoming, the sicker human beings are getting. But there are, however, steps you can take and they're pretty easy if you ask me and some of them are free. Um, so to mitigate the negative effects of blue light. Now, if, you're, if you've got this far and you're thinking, oh man, my kid's looking at his phone or his laptop in bed before he's going to sleep at night or he's, he's a gamer, 
let's say he's a gamer and he's playing his Xbox all evening right up before he goes to bed and then he's a very dedicated gamer so he doesn't like to go outside during the day even when the sun is shining so he's constantly exposed to blue light and then when he goes to school what bulbs do schools use Yep, they use fluorescent blue lighting. So you think of your kids um, and their health and what this may be doing to them, you might be saying, oh shit, right about now. So what are the steps that we can do? Well, firstly, you can reduce your exposure to blue light by swapping out LED and fluorescent bulbs for incandescent bulbs, okay? Now, if you need a blue light, so if you need something really bright for say recording videos or doing your makeup or something, then you just get yourself some sort of diva lamp. You can get small ones for less than $20 on Amazon and you just take it out as you need it. But otherwise in your house, you're sticking to more incandescent bulbs and they're really warm and they're really nice and I like them because they give me that warm kind of safe comfort feeling, especially in the winter when it's all white and freezing cold outside, but you're in your house and you're trying to get cozy with your fire on, you got your incandescent bulbs. It just makes for a really nice, relaxed, comfortable, safe environment. And the key word there being relaxed because it helps your body to just relax. Incandescent bulbs contain much less of that blue light spectrum that we're trying to mitigate. Alternatively, candles are a great option for nighttime lighting, especially in the darker months, like in the summer and spring, you can kind of just wind down and just stick to natural light. As it gets dark outside, your house is gonna get darker. You shouldn't really need to use lights too much in the brighter months. But in the winter months, uh, you can definitely go back to that warm, comforty feeling and use candles candles um, as the nights get darker earlier you could start popping some candles around obviously in a very safe place where kids can't pull at it or cats can't jump up and knock them over and set your house on fire so be smart about stuff like that um, so other than the moon and the stars the only light our ancestors would have seen at night was fire and candles are technically fire um, so in the darker months you got candles and fire and um, you can even get and I have a few of them popped around my house and you can get them on Amazon you can get little um, socket plugins that are just red light and you pop them around the house so they just emit that red light which is pretty much all the blue spectrum pulled out of it so you're not walking into stuff and breaking your toes and falling over toys and stuff so you'd pop those uh, socket plugins all over the house so that you can see where you're going. Um, you don't need to have bright lights in the evening. Um, if you're working on a project or something, like I said, you can use a diva lamp or some sort of lamp bulb, but you can also still see pretty well with incandescent bulbs in those lamps if you needed something. I usually recommend, when we look at electronics, I usually recommend that my clients stop using their electronics at least one hour before going to bed. And that's at least, like if you can do it earlier, that's obviously going to be beneficial. Um, but let's be real, most of us are going to be using our phones, checking emails, checking what I've said on Facebook or watching TV after sundown. Um, so if you are going to to be using electronic devices there are ways to do it wisely and this, this is especially important for children and teenagers it's it's important for everyone so <clears throat> firstly if you have an iphone there's a feature called night shift which you, which you can set to turn on when you want personally i keep night shift on all the time night shift needs to have a downtime of five minutes on the phone which means it turns itself off for five minutes in that five minutes you can't turn it back on again um so why what I have it set at, you can set a timer on it, is that my shift, my night shift runs from 5 a.m. to 4.55 a.m. 
I'm never really awake at 4.55 a.m. So if my night shift turns off in those five minutes where I'm asleep, it's not going to affect me whatsoever. So that's easy. It's free. It's on all iPhones. If you don't have an iPhone, um, you can use a software called f.lux that is available for most smartphones but it's definitely available for laptops and desktops and i use it on my laptop and my son's laptop as well so it's you just go to f.lux l-u-x Dot com and you can download the software for free it's really easy to use and again I just keep it on for most of the day you'll get a little settings kind of on your toolbar that you can go in and set the time when you want and the intensity and pretty much the software pulls out all the blue light out of your laptop screen which is great so it just makes everything look warmer there is another app called iris I have used it but honestly, I didn't like it. It's not free, which is not why I didn't like it, but it was not very user friendly, not like F.Lux is. Um, so Iris, it is an option, you can look into it, but I just didn't find it very user friendly at all. And then it kept doing all these updates and notifications and it was just a pain. So I deleted it and I'm perfectly happy with my night shift and F.Lux. Um, you can get blue light, blocking glasses or lenses i do have some but i don't always wear them these glasses have an orange tint to their lenses the really good ones have red tint um you can get them on amazon and they block blue lights so they're blue light blockers pretty much um the redder the lenses the more blue light they block um and if if you find that you need to be on your electronics later in the evening even if you have okay so even if you have night shift and f looks on your electronics but you need to stay working on electronics later into the evening for deadlines or work obligations or whatever it may be and you've already spent a lot of the day indoors under artificial light it would be wise to get some blue light blocking glasses and still wear them in the evenings so you would wear them at least two hours before you go to bed and I, the keyword there is least but optimally i would wear them in the evenings just all evening um just to just to stack conditions in your favor it's it would just be very smart to do something like that um so in summary in the hunt for more energy efficient products We've seen that LEDs have taken over the lighting industry um, and these sleep damaging lights are pretty much everywhere. So it's up to us to mitigate their effects and stack conditions in our favor, which is the world of biohacking, constantly stacking conditions in our favor because there's just some stuff that is out of our control, um, kind of the 80-20 rule. So be conscious of the light you use and the light you and your family are exposed to after hours and later in the evening. Invest in a pair of blue light blocking glasses if you can definitely use night shift there's no reason why you wouldn't use that download um software like flux um and then if you can switch out your bulbs to incandescent bulbs use candles use your fireplace if it's the winter i'm not going to say use fire because <laughs> that's not very smart using fire all over the house but you know what I mean and then also you can get those little red um, plugins for your house so if you want a link to the red plugins that I use or the blue light lock blocking glasses that I use or even a link to f.lux let me know reach out to me you can hit me up on Facebook or you can email me shemaine at findyourmodelhealth.info or on my website so you can reach out to me in a lot of places and I can get those links over to you um, if this is posted on Facebook I will probably have posted the links below if not hit me up for them okay I really hope you found this episode helpful like I really do because I don't think people are quite getting 
how environmental factors are are impacting our health on a serious level um, and I, I know it sounds a bit woo woo to people, I do know, but I will stress there is so much stuff out in our environment that is actually out of our control. It, we just can't do anything about it. That we need to be smart and stack conditions in our favor, do the things that we can that are in that we are capable of doing and changing in our own environments and lives that will help stack stuff in our favor towards optimizing our health and optimizing the goals that we have set for ourselves and our children and this is why I wanted to put this out I have a teenage son I have two sons my teenager is either on his xbox on his phone on his laptop unless I drag him out of the house kicking and screaming to get some real light and fresh air that's where he spends the majority of his time so I have incandescent lights I have those socket blockers the red lights I have night shift on his phone I have flux on his apps um I just just the all these little things will add up um so I hope you found this helpful I hope you will try implement some of these practices very affordable affordable like I said easy enough to do and I hope you do see improvements in your sleep quality by making these changes because we all know how important sleep is um, for everything in life health reaching our goals um, optimizing our decision making capabilities other cognitive performance memory recall like driving like look at the instances of car crashes that are associated to poor sleep poor food choices poor sleep connection the whole lot so i hope you found this podcast helpful and i hope you do see the positive influence it can have in your life okay as always take care i'll speak to you next week and if you do know anyone that would benefit from these episodes or the information in this podcast please do share and help me reach the masses so we can help make the whole world well some of the world healthier okay all right thanks guys and i'll chat to you soon bye bye